Hello, thank you so much for joining me for this very special and exclusive Spoonflower event. And today's tutorial, we are going to be creating some of the mistletoe greetings cards behind us in watercolour with a little bit of gold detail in the bow and the berries. So I really hope you're going to be enjoying what we shall be painting together. For this particular project, I'm going to be picking out just two greens. It's a sap green and also a forest green. And these are my Kurateke watercolours. I'm sure you've got something very similar in your own set. Now, it's always a really good idea to get your watercolour pans, if that's what you're using, by just adding lots of clean water just to get them ready for painting and just leave them there for about 30 seconds and then you can transfer some of that colour into here because we need some nice washes. So just add some of that forest green into here. You can use it straight from this palette but it might be easier for this project to transfer some of the different greens into a palette. Okay, this is the watercolour paper that I've cut to five by seven and I folded it in half and obviously we want to be painting on this side so when you unfold it, and I recommend that you do unfold it, we must be mindful that we will be painting on this side which is the right hand side. This is the brush that I like to use, it's a quill brush and you don't need to go out and find one of these. It's probably the equivalent of a number 12 or 14 round brush. And I really like using these because you can really soak up loads of watercolour pigment. Before we get onto the card proper, I think it's really important just to practice with our brush and watercolour on printer paper, or you would call it Xerox paper. It's just very inexpensive paper. We need to practice making some of those iconic leaf shapes of the mistletoe and holding the brush in a certain way and lifting it up. So if we start by pressing down hard, this is one way you can do it, and then lifting it up, you get that shape. Another way you can do it is pressing down lightly and then harder as you go down so you get that. I would practice this a few times so that you, you know how to create those shapes before we move on to the card. Press either press down and then lift up or the other way round. I, I use both is to press down lightly and then progressively get harder and then lift up Let's just try one more. I'm going to add a little curve to that, then lift up. No, that shape wasn't quite right. Try again. And one more. Hard, gentle lift up. Press down hard and gently lift up and the stems obviously go there like so. So it's really good idea to warm up and just practice. You don't want to get frustrated once you get to the card and you've made a mistake because you didn't know how to form the leaves. Before we start by adding the watercolour stem I, I want to say that it's going to be fairly central, but it's going to be curved as well. So I'm going to load up my brush with quite a significant amount. See how much I'm dipping it into my sap green wash. And let's add that central stem. So it's going to be slightly thicker at the top. So press down fairly hard and with your fist resting on the paper, drag it down to about two thirds of the way down and then we're going to add the two leaves on either side. So remember how we practiced before. So you press down 
gently and then much harder and then lift up so there's our first leaf there and we're just still using sap green and do load up your brush quite a lot don't be shy and there's the second leaf there and we're going to fill up the rest of this uh, layout here uh, I, I'm always quite uh, mindful of filling up the negative space so I think the next leaf could be about here and then lift up and you can see that I, I use both methods pressing down hard and then lifting up and then the other way around and I can add this um, as a stem to this central one here there we go now filling up this space here I think we'll need a little bit more water on that brush um, pressing down a little bit harder for the end of that leaf there we go and now the other side lovely and now moving on to this side I'm going to need um, a leaf to fill up this space here and so the other one will go roughly about here and let's add a stem and, and again make sure it joins up to this central one here oh I, I've forgotten this one so let, let's do that now there we go and now we're going to use some of the forest green and go over this card layout again to fill up the rest of the space so i think we need another stem again coming it's going to cross over this the first one that we created about here and i think the first set of leaves can go about here that's lovely and the other one another set can go overlap it around about this central and and do watch out to see what happens i i particularly like watching out for things like that where it starts to merge oh that's gorgeous that just joins up here lovely and Let's fill up some of the negative space on the other side. We've got a bit of space here. Oh, I, I like the way it's just uh, merged. The pigments have merged on the page and I think the stem will have to, um, right, I'm gonna have to add another stem going up to here like so I'm gonna to have to define that stem a little bit better but it's it's too wet at the moment and if I try to define that I'll just get a, a bit of a mess so I think I need to balance it out there's a lot of the forest green happening here so I want to go back and use some of the sap green there I think it needs to be more of a wash there's too much pigment right now it's all right I can still introduce a little bit more water so I think that is going to join onto that stem there lovely there we go so as it's drying um, we can introduce a bit more pigment and then watch it change and meld together I don't know if that's a word um, I'll show you what I, I want to do so I'm going to add some of that forest green here and down here now that's dried a bit too much so that's all right I can still introduce a little bit more of this sap green pigment to define the edge there that's lovely and you'll notice I have worked quite fast and um, I am used to this way of working so just have fun with this don't worry too much about the colors mixing to um on the page um that's one of the beauties of working wet on wet i think this 
particular one in the middle is too dense so I'm, I'm washing out my brush I'm just going to introduce a drop of water just there and when it dries you'll see that it, it would have taken on a certain look and give a certain effect which I think will help to give a bit more of a, a texture there rather than something that's too solid. So I'm going to leave it there now and see what happens when it dries. Now that this is dry, I really love to just take a moment to see some of the textures that have formed and that's one of the beauties of working wet on wet. I love seeing the end results. Uh, you can't always control it, but you can have a fair idea how it's going to turn out. This is the metallic watercolour set that I've got from Curateke and I think for the mistletoe card this red gold would be perfect. I love adding water to the pan and just seeing all that lovely shimmering happening in there. This is the round brush that I'm using, it's a number four because we will be creating the ribbon it needs to be just that little bit smaller. Let's load up our brush with a fair amount of this beautiful gold watercolour and we've got enough room on this side for a ribbon and definitely on this side so very similar to how we practice the mistletoe leaves, press down hard and that will give you the the bow aspect of the ribbon and just underneath is just a smaller much thinner line just to indicate that's the underside of the ribbon and we do the same here so actually I'm going to start off here pressing down much harder give an indication that the bow goes underneath and this bit in the middle and we need to create the different parts of the bow so I'm going to start here press down hard and lift up oh that's really pretty I've really enjoyed creating that one and also I think we've got space just here there we go press down and lift up I know mistletoe doesn't have golden berries but I thought it would be really nice to add a few since we've got a, a golden bow happening and I'm just gonna go around and see where there's areas where I can fill up some of the negative space let's say here and here just so that, the, that we have a much more balanced composition and in real life we're trying to create something that was much more botanical I don't think that the berries would necessarily be placed here this is my version of it so and I, I, I really think these gold berries show off the beautiful effects of the watercolour and I think just one more here and here I think that could be rounded off a tiny bit. I think that looks marvellous. I think it's always really important to take a step back once you've finished your piece and think, wow, I've created a new piece of art and really give yourself a pat on the back because I think what we've created here is so pretty and it's in fitting with the season. I really love this. I actually created a whole series of these mistletoe cards and they're all very unique even though I used exactly the same method they've come out in their own special way and I think that's one of the beauties of working this way. You have something that is always going to give you little surprises and also each one is perfect in its own way. 
I really hope you have enjoyed today's tutorial and I'm sure your mistletoe greetings cards are absolutely spectacular. If you would like to tag me, my Instagram handle is own underscore ma underscore win and I can't wait to see some of your beautiful images.